Hello and welcome okay. back to the Only Aki's channel. It's finished here. Hamilton nil, St Mirren 3 and yet again another season where we are out the Scottish Cup in the early stages. Um, Brandon, you started the call by saying you had some, some interesting thoughts, some interesting opinions, so I'll come to you first. Uh, what are your thoughts after today? Um, we were the better team. Okay. Uh, St Mirren showed that they were very poor again, um, but I don't know, this end product wasn't there. I think a lot of people have, have noticed on Twitter, and I'll, I'll, I'll happily say Moyo had needs to score that, but Moyo was much more influential than Bruce Anderson in that pitch the other day. Um, Moyo was involved in a lot more. Bruce Anderson wasn't, was a pretty non-existent in my opinion, but at the end of the day, we've been beat 3 now off a St Mum side that was very similar to that of the last game and of the other game. And... I, I, I think three now wasn't the correct result, but um, it's, it seems a year come hang at the present moment where we're, we're getting beat these games or no taking out anything from the games where we could have easily won that if we were a bit better. But I genuinely don't think we were the, the worst team in that game there. I'm not saying we were good, it was just how bad St Mum were. That's interesting. Uh, David, um, before I respond, I'll, I'll come to you. What did you make uh, after today? No, I think that's a fair point. I think, despite the scoreline, I don't think we were pumped. Um, the difference is, it's just that we were against a team that took their chances. Um, I, I, I can agree with the, the Moyo point as well. I mean, the fact of the matter is, though, that, that has to go in. You've got to take that header. I mean, it's one of those ones where it's that stupid cliche where it's probably harder to miss than score yeah. it. Um, but it was just... I mean, I don't know if it's just the way I was looking at it, but once that first goal went in, I we, we, we definitely played uh, the better football at times, but I didn't see us coming back at all. Yeah. I, I, I think I was just deflated when right. that goal went in, but I just thought we were beat at that point. And I was obviously proven right. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to agree and disagree on a few things. I don't think either team was great today, Um yeah, we played some good football at times, but there was no real part of that game where I thought we necessarily played. It, it, it was like it was more so just poor teams. That's what it was. It's yeah, nothing I, about it was, two, it was two poor teams, and I agree with what David said. St. Mirren were just clinical. They had they had three four chances and they took three of them. That's just how it is. Um, I just think that I get I get your point with David Moyo. It, like I agree, he needs to score that. Blah blah blah, but. I don't know if I would say he was more influential than Bruce Anderson because I don't think either of them were necessarily very influential. I'm not, that's not me necessarily saying that... Aye, maybe saying more influential is a bad word. I just think it's the same old sort of Aki's cliche where we're looking to sort of use a scapegoat and obviously because Moyo has been so poor and he's not really done much at all this season, people are going to yeah. sort of throw him under the so, bus and that's all I'm seeing in social media. But I don't think that's fair because... There's a lot of other players there who, I they've been pretty good mm -hmm. for other parts of the season, but they were just non-existent yeah. there. Well, I, I um, totally agree with that. I don't think scapegoating David Moyo isn't the way to go there. Is the game different if he scores? Of course. But there's so many other problems there today. I mean, going with a back four when... And listen, we've called for it, right? So this just proves that a back four doesn't work. Because going with the back four, that start of the game, we were so open. It was scary. Obika had right. Aaron Martin on toast. Brian Easton is not comfortable in that too. It just doesn't It just doesn't happen. And there was so See, many times where we were left with two defenders at the back and neither of them necessarily very quick. So that didn't, that didn't work. And then when he makes the change, we get another injury, we'll come on to that. But when he makes the change and then moves Lee Hodson into the middle, I just, I don't understand that. I don't get that. See if Jamie Hamilton's fit enough to play for the 30th minute, then he's fit enough to play a full 90 minutes. That, that's the way yeah. I see it. I don't know what the, what the thing is in the background about Jamie Hamilton apparently being injured, but if, if he can come on and play for the 30th minute, then he's got the fitness levels to play the 90th minute. I said when the sub happened, um, if he's slightly injured, then it should have been Joel Stanner. Joel Stanner came on. But, I, I, but if, if Brian Rice has got the faith that he's perhaps no injured, so he's playing him for the 30th minute, then why is he not just starting? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree. We'll talk about that injury 
it's another big player and it's another injury. Um, Scott Martin looks to have pulled a hamstring, uh, bombed in the wing chasing after a beak and just stops running, immediately calls for calls for the uh, the physio uh, and then he's taken off. Um, we don't know how long that will be, but given it's a hamstring and given that he immediately signalled for help, it doesn't look good. That could be another injury out for the rest of the season. Um, David, I mean, we're fucking, we've got so many injuries today. Somebody put a, a, a tweet under the Aki's full time on a list of players injured. We got two today: Scott Martin and Ronan Hughes. Like, where are all these coming from? What is happening? I don't know. I don't know if it's just. I mean, I, 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 I get obviously people think that there's something that's maybe Aki's influence that's causing these injuries. Maybe it's training. Maybe it's the part. Maybe it's risking players when they shouldn't be. I definitely think that has happened in the past, but I think it may just be the intensity and the compact schedule that they've had at times within this season. Obviously, today, that's not the case because they've had the best part of their fortnight off. But, I mean, I'm, I'm realistic when it comes to Hamill. I'm not expecting us to have an amazing in-depth squad, but today was a an eye-opener when I saw the bench, where we, yeah. it's not like we've got crazy depth but I mean I can't remember the names off the top but it was literally the entire set up and Callum Smith um, and I just thought like that's just not a Premier League bench at all um, and yeah we have got our injuries but every team gets injuries um, I think it's just more uh, more apparent to us because we don't have the cover that other teams do have mm. um, but I don't know what's happening with the injuries, it definitely does seem like there's there's more than ever. Yeah. But I've got, I've, got, I've got a point I want to make about injuries whilst we're on that topic. Um, what player has been missing recently that I, I must say I, I wasn't his biggest fan whatsoever, but see when you actually take a back seat and look at it, what player's been missing? What player was involved when we were playing our best football? This player picks up all the scraps and allows other players to play in their role a bit better. Charlie Trafford. Think about it. Ross Callahan, Ross Callahan was a ten times better player when 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 Charlie Trafford was there to pick up all the, the sort of pieces, uh, and that allowed your midfield players to get more forward and sort of perform a lot better. I never thought about it in that way, but see when you actually take a back seat and look at the games where we have been a lot better and we have been in the sort of front foot, it's been when Charlie Trafford was involved. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And, That's interesting. I had never thought about that until somebody mentioned that. And Trafford did play well. No, I, I think I, I I'm not necessarily he's saying happy. I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying he's the best. He's the best player, but the fact that he's there, he picks, he's picking up all the scraps. It allows other play, players to venture off into positions that are more favourable for them. I.e. Ross Callum. Which that's interesting. That is interesting. Um, no, you're right, man. Like we said a couple of weeks ago, when things were kind of going right for us. We were saying that surely that one of the main reasons was the fact that we've got players playing in their natural positions. Mm-hmm. So Charlie Trafford, like you say, he's not the best player, but what he does complements the players that play the positions Aye, are in. Exactly. So it's, it makes sense. I mean, like you said, it's, I think for as long as I've been an Aki's fan, we've always had utility players. We've always relied on players to kind of fill the gaps mm-hmm. um, with a lack of depth in the squad. But like you say, putting Lee Hodgson in midfield just... I just absolutely nullifies him. Like he's he's I, a good player. He was, he, he's not going to change the game there. He's not going to help there. To be to be fair, he was looking maybe a threat going forward than Ronan Hughes. So I, I, I think that's I all that, no, I'm sorry, right? I'm going to stand up for. I actually thought Ronan Hughes played well today. I so thought Ronan Hughes, yeah. Hughes did well. He was linking up play really well with Bruce Anderson. He was one of the only one of the very few players asking for the ball to his feet. He's the only one. Who, he's the only one who. I looked at and actually thought he's playing quite well. He's linking up plays, creating chances. I'm going to stand by Ronnie Hughes. He still listen. He's still not good enough for like to be a. St- I don't, you know, I don't want him. I don't want him in the re- team for the rest of the season. But after today, I like. I don't see why MD can really call him out for having a poor performance. Because I thought I thought Ronnie Hughes played well today. I did do well. I think he, he, he he's justifying his position on the bench. I mean, because. Like I say, today, today he's someone that is 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 he had a good game today. The problem is he'll play against Dundee United. He'll start against Dundee United. Uh, be pish. See, I, I don't like that's that's he's had a good game. Nobody can have a good game if we've been beat three now. No, no. Uh, do you know what I mean? I can understand. I know what that. you mean. I know what you mean because the, the levels were expected to 
sort of previous games and stuff like that. Listen, I said before this game, if we go at the Scottish Cup, it's it's no biggie. I think I think if we go, as long as we don't get pumped, I'll be fine with that. Um, that game, I think we we gave a fairly good account of, of ourselves. Um, it was two pitch teams. St. Mern have shown again they didn't look in special. They've still managed to come out that game with a three 0 victory. Something's clearly not working. What's that? Uh, one one in thirteen. Yeah. I, I've got a very interesting question I want to ask you. Um, when, no. Okay, so five games left to the end of the season. Would you attempt to bring in Alex Neil <laughs> to do something with the team? To the end of the season, I'm not necessarily saying give or uh, oh, get nice to fucking give a managerial job. Would you? What else and, is Alex uh, Neil going to be doing at the present moment? Would oh, you try yes. and get him involved in the setup? A hundred percent, like without question. A hundred percent. I thought you were putting it like like you well you, you said to make sure we didn't take it away. That I thought you were putting it like. No, there's not a chance. Alex Neil is uh, a no. managerial job. But, no, he, he's he's got a chef job. Oh. Um, I, I think yeah, definitely. I mean, I there's there's absolutely no reason why not like come in and kind of get his piece okay. help training. And I totally, that's a good. It can idea. only, it, it can only, in my opinion, it's it wouldn't affect his legacy whatsoever. No. If he came in and we still get relegated, but that could only have a positive effect. It was someone mentioned that comment to me. Somebody mentioned to me about getting him in as a manager at the end of the season, but that's impossible. Yeah. Um, uh, but have, having him come in and see his sort of influence. Yep, I agree. I agree. I really do. Um, we'll just go back to the game very quickly, finish, to just tick off some more points. Um, Stonewall penalty, uh, Ronan Hughes pushing the back, um, not given. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Is that a Stonewall penalty to you guys? It is to me. Aye. Was I missed it. <laughs> Did you miss <laughs> I missed it. Okay. I hadn't even actually started drinking then, so I, I, I genuinely didn't see it. Um, I thought when, I think Ben mentioned to me in the middle of the game, I thought he was talking about um, when Anderson sort of had a foul and it went against him. But no, I, I, I can't I, I can't comment. I didn't see it. Aye, there was a couple of kind of right hard challenges like that that we didn't get the foul for. Um, and like you said, I think it's just the, the referees had a bit of a howler. Yeah. Um, I think what I would like to ask now is, is do you think this result, and like Brandon said, I don't think we were pumped, but we still ended the day, it's a 3 0 scoreline. Do you think this could help towards the split games coming, where it's listen, we competed in that game, which we definitely did, but that's three goals for three chances. Don't get me wrong, I think the two obviously in play goals are well taken goals, both of them. Um, but surely that's something that's that's hopefully going to help us prepare for these split games. I, I would so personally. I, mean, I would hope how frustrated player Ross Callahan screaming at the top of his lungs in the corner because he didn't get a ball. Like if anything, I thought the players left the pitch frustrated. Now could that go in our favour where they then go into these games not wanting to have that feeling again, not wanting to be on the losing side of a three 0 scoreline? Maybe. But to me, it just looked like they were more frustrated that St Mirren were shutting down everything they, everything they tried. Um, the, thing all, the, the effect I wanted to have, and I understand where you're coming through with that question. I hope Rice comes out after it and pretty much says, look, you were you were involved in a game there where you competed, you, you, you didn't get bumped, but at the end of the day, you've still been beat 3-0. Aye. That cannot happen at all. Mm-hmm. Now, you, you, if you're going to compete in games, you're going to be you're going to be completely involved. You know what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. If, you're, if, you're, if you're competing, in, if you're competing, and you're you're perhaps maybe maybe even a better team, and you're still getting beat. You know that cannot happen. Yeah, exactly. Without the cup now, all focus is in the next five games. Cup five, cup finals, like I said in the podcast, and they just need a bit up the arse. Give them the bit up the arse that was given after Ross County, because that has been since. Since maybe the St. Mon away game, that's just it's been out the window and we've we went back the back the way to where we were um, when we we're getting pumped games, we've just maybe not been pumped as such in the score lines. Um, we just need to go back to what happened after Lost County and hopefully we'll have a few players back. Um, but I'm not holding my breath. 
the thing that we always seem to do well with split is the teams that you don't actually expect us to take in from. So your teams that are sitting higher up the table and the split, the ones that don't have as much to play for. We always actually, if you look at previous years, we always get something from those games because obviously it's just that we get a wee bit more desire. So that's mm. something we've got to go in with. I don't know about you guys. I'm scunnered after that game because I know we said in the podcast that I would rather focus in the league and I'm, I'm really not too fussed but out the cup it was just more the performance today I wasn't I wasn't over the moon with but listen we now go ahead to the split fixtures Dundee United at first uh, and we will speak to you all after that thank you very much for watching uh, and we'll see you then <laughs>